Hey guys, okay, I hope you're still with me. We're gonna continue our study of the double integral, but this time we're gonna move to the area where region R is non rectangular. Now, so far, we know what the double integral is. The double integral again gives us the volume of the solid, which is really bounded by the area R, and the surface are defined by f of x and y. So right now, you know, so far the past three lessons we've been dealing with rectangular regions, you know, and we have certain theorems to handle that. Okay, but right now we're gonna move to the point which is really more interesting and it's really the more general case, the case that we're gonna use to solve all our problems of double integral, and that is when the region R is non-rectangular. Now I must say at this point that plane regions, or at least plane regions that you know defined by R, okay, can be entirely complex. And right now, you know, we may not have a good cause of advanced couplers to handle that. So, you know. Our region R is going to be broken down into two categories. Okay, so remember, we're just uh, focusing our study on the region R. Okay, um, we're basically the double integral of f, you know, the function um, over R. Okay, so what is the two types of region R that we will define? Well, firstly, is type one. Okay, type one, as you can see, is the region R defined by here. So remember, this is region R. The z-axis, if you want to, you know, conceptually visualize it, is really shooting out of the whiteboard. So it's uh, going towards you. Uh, why, why I did not draw it? Well, right now we are focusing on the region R because it's also equally important, you know, like, like I said, the solid, okay, is defined by the region R, okay, and the surface uh, defined by the um, function of F. So this is the region R. And what's type 1? Well, type 1 is basically the left and right is, is bounded, okay, by X is equal to A, the X axis and the Y axis, and X equals to B, the left and right is bounded by that. And below and above by uh, y equals to the g1 in terms of x and y equals to g2 in terms of x. Okay, so it's bounded by these uh, boundaries. Now, uh, important, important point to note is that the function of g1 and g2 must be continuous. Okay, I mean this is really a trivial result. You know, if you have a gap inside the function, it's really very difficult to you know bound up the area r. So this is type one. Okay. Uh, what is type 2? Well, type 2 is um, shown over here. Okay, it's a bit different, so I hope you can, you know, draw some parallels or draw a contrast between the two. Well, this time, okay, region R is bounded below and above by the um, x equals y equals to c, so it's basically a straight line, uh, y equals to d, okay, and left and right by x is equals to h1y, uh, which is here, and right by x is equals to h2y. Now, these two, again, I say must be continuous, uh, trivial and obvious result. Uh, what's the difference between the two? Well, it's your parallel with your one variable calculus of integrating with respect to x and integrating with respect to y. Now, some things I must say is that y must be a function, most importantly, and it's going to be in terms of x. Okay? That's quite obvious. Now, um, many students tend to forget this, but I just want to re-emphasize it. When I say it's a function, it needs to be something like this. Okay? It, you cannot have two values of y for one value of x, so it cannot be like that. Okay? If I, I, um, it cannot be like this. Okay, this one, your whole integration breaks down because this will come into point in more advanced questions such as the equation of a circle. Okay, uh, most, those of you who are good may know. So basically, if I have the function, like, this is not a function because for one value of x, let's just say x equals to b, I get two values of y, it's not going to work. So um, the, that's why the term, okay, and I guess a lot of teachers kind of miss it, the term function is very important. It has a lot of um, um, implicit meanings and this is one of them. Um, what does that mean? Well, one value of x must give a unique value of y. So basically, basically that's a function. Now, if we have type 2, um, the curves, okay, if you can think about it, are defined um, of a function in terms of y. But we write it, um, you know, so it's x is equal to a function in terms of y, and that's the left and the right. Now, I know this is the more odd case, you know, if they could use such a term, but never mind. Okay, so these are the two regions that we are concerned with, type 1 and type 2. Okay, and what I'm going to say now is going to be possibly the most important theorem when dealing with double integrals, okay? So, the theorem is this. Now, if we want to evaluate okay, the double integral of f over the area r, okay, and it's written like so, if r is a type 1 region, which is given by that, the double integral is going to be equal to first integrate uh, the function of f with respect to y, sorry, partial integrate, but right now I may just drop the term because I don't think it's vitally important. Um, and then we're going to integrate from g1, okay, to g2. Okay, so it's basically g1 to g2 over here. Never mind for a minute, okay, to you know what, uh, you don't know how to evaluate it, but just bear with me. Once you do that, you integrate with respect to x, okay, uh, from a to b. That is if type 1. Now, if it's type 2, which is over here, we integrate the same function um, of x and y, but first we're going to integrate with respect to x, okay, and the limits are the function h1 and h2 in terms of y. Now, that is not an error. It's not a written error. Okay, I say again. Okay, we're gonna integrate the function of x and y with respect to x, but the limits are the functions h1 and h2 with respect to y. Okay, 
And then after that, you know, we integrate that with respect to why and limited CD. Now, very quickly going to it. Um, one we can think about it, which I did when I was studying, is that you know the, the, the constant limits, okay, this time A and B and C and D are always on the outside. Okay, not strictly speaking, but I uh, just think about it uh, like that. Okay, and then the, the limits, okay, which is the function is always on the inside. Now, let me explain what this means. Alright, now you should be able to evaluate that immediately, but a lot of students get confused. Why am I integrating or partial integrate with respect to x, but the function in terms of y? Well, I can just tell you right now, you see, the thing is this. This, okay, just uh, imagine this first integral sign in the dy, okay, this whole thing right here, okay, let me ask you a question. If we want to evaluate that with respect to y, what must the function be? The function must be a function in terms of y. Doesn't that make sense? Okay, again, over here. If we want to, you know, integrate this thing, whatever it may be, in terms of x, the function over here must be x. That is why we first integrate with respect to y, we're going to put in the limits which are limits in terms of x and then we would have this whole expression in terms of x and then we can integrate um, the thing. So really, okay, so when you're into partial integrating or if you're integrating with respect, to, um, uh, uh, with respect to terms such as y, the limits must be of the opposite sign because when we substitute inside or shall I say the limits must be the same variables as the variable that's outside because when we substitute inside, you know, then we can calculate the proper integration. Now, if you didn't believe me, on that, I'm just going to show you very quickly, okay, um, a graphical illustration, okay. Now, this is a um, much better way to, to think about it, okay. What we have right now is that we got a region type 1, okay, so the region R is here, and it's a type 1 region, okay, it's going to be given by this uh, thing over here. Now, what does the double integral give us? The double integral gives us the solid, right? So if I write the double integral of x, um, x and y, okay, dA, I'm actually giving the solid, let's just say the volume of the solid, uh, let's just say it's uh, S, Okay, and uh, basically it's this one over here. Now, what can we rewrite that x? Now, s is a type 1 region. Okay, x has the constant uh, limits, right? So, you see, x is equal to a, x equals to b. So, you know, we're going to integrate, okay, from a, um, a equals to b. However, what is this term over here in terms of x? Well, this term over here is going to be the area in terms of x. Okay, I hope you can see that. So, what I'm going to do right now is that I want to find the, the volume of the solid that is bounded by this uh, function, okay, and the region R. Okay, now if I were to, you know, cut it up, okay, in terms of lines uh, along the y, parallel to the y-axis, or it's really uh, perpendicular to the x-axis, okay, I will get these small little sheets, but what are the small little sheets? The small little sheets will have an area of, in terms of x, okay, why do I say that? Well, basically, if x is equal to 1, the area, okay, is going to be, you know, a certain area in terms of x. If x equals to 2, the area is going to be a certain area. So that is the area that we have over here. These two expressions are, are equally the same. It gives us the volume. However, what is A of x? Well, A of x, if we want to you know, do our single variable calculus or one variable calculus, is simply the area okay, given by integrate from this function to this function. Okay, so g1x to g2x. Okay, um, and then of the function fx is y dy. Okay, I say again, now the area what we want to find is uh, from here to here, right? So we want to find this sheet of area over here. Okay, and you know, uh, we're going to integrate with respect to the x-axis, but what is our boundaries? Our boundaries are these two lines over here in terms of x. That's why we've written, written it over there. The what's at the top, the function is going to be the same, function f x and y. So if we were to just substitute this inside here, integrate a, b, g1, x, g2, x, the function of x and y, d, y, dx. That is the exact same result that we have over here. Okay, now I'm going to show some uh, explicit examples so you know what it means. But right now, let's just focus on these two theorems. Turning, turning the double integral into the iterative integral so we can carry out the proper calculations. Bear in mind that, you know, when we substitute the limits in, we have to have an expression that we can integrate in terms of, you know, x or y. Okay, and type 1 and type 2 regions which you should know about. And let's just go through an example, okay? I know right now, you know, things are getting a bit shaky, you know, you might be shivering your chair, but don't worry, okay? Danny's here, and in the next lesson, we're going to handle these sort of problems. Thanks.